So my name is again Nahum Masazki. I'm a graduate student at Carnegie Mellon University. I'm in the biomedical engineering department. So today I'll be talking to you about human versus machine, which is a very, very cool topic. And at the end, we'll wrap up with a, a tutorial on uh, using some of the awesome softwares that have been developed here at Carnegie Mellon University. Let's get going. So the power of machine learning. So what is machine learning? Every day we interact with our phones, our devices in more than just in an old fashioned way, more than communication or talking to our parents or our friends. We use it to take pictures, you use it to browse the, the web, the internet, post Snapchat on social media and all that. So they have become more and more advanced. And for example, in this picture, our, our phones are now able to automatically track faces without having to tell them that's a face, that's a hand, that's a shirt. They can identify what is what automatically. And if you've been using this feature for, it's been around for a while, you can open your phone without having to put a, a passcode. Instead, you can use your fingerprint to open it, your phone. You can scan a QR code. I think you were all just looking at the, um, the lab using by scanning the QR code. I hope hopefully everybody was able to use that. And that's, you know, the advancement of uh, machine learning from automated machines, from cars, right? Self-driving cars now use this technology, machine learning technology to identify what's the car, what's the human, what's the pole, what's a uh, traffic light. Um, speaking of traffic, like those annoying questions we get every time we try to open a website to make sure that we're not robots, that's all related to machine learning. And lastly, and more fun compared to other things is Snapchat filters. Like when you scan your face, you're able to change your face and alter your face in a different shape, size, uh, you know, character, whatever you like. And that's all has to do with machine learning. So today, before we dive in into... Um, uh, you know, exercises and how to use this technology, we want to go in depth of what machine learning is and peel a layer so you guys can have some foundational knowledge so that when you're at home and you're interested in this topic, you'll be able to, to get started working on this. So Haley was talking to you about motion cap captures, you know, how we use these markers to track human position, human postures. And these are now used everywhere. Like any movie that has a CGI essentially uses motion capture. And not only in movies, but also games like you guys, we, we were all uh, learning about esports. And so companies are investing a lot of money to create these uh, human-like forms so that we can have a very enriched experience every time we go to watch a movie or play games. But Haley was explaining to you some of the limitations with using this motion captures. Uh, a, we have to use markers in order for the markers to work. We have to use this very tight uh, cloth. And, you know, they're very uncomfortable, especially if you have to be in them for a long time. So today, we will be learning more about the markerless, so uh, tracking human position without a need for um, markers. So here is Andy. He is, he's recorded this video using his cell phone, not, nothing fancy, nothing uh, extraordinary, just a cell phone, and he exercised. So today, we will learn how we can take Andy's video and be able to do some of the, the similar things that we were able to do with motion capture that Haley was showing you. So before we do that, I want to give you a, a brief introduction. And there are going to be some questions I'm going to ask you guys. So feel free to use the chat and to answer the questions. That way you guys can be engaged in this workshop. So if my first question is, what is the most powerful computer ever developed? Can somebody answer that question for me? And I'll be tracking the chat. Phone, okay, the phone. Something by Google, maybe. Okay. Deep blue. Wow. Cool, cool. Those are all great uh, answers. However, the most powerful computer ever developed was our brain. How many of you thought about that? Because our brain is the most powerful computer because the reason why computers were developed was because they, we, they, we wanted them to think like us. So because our brain right now at this moment, your brain is able to pay attention. Hopefully all of you are paying attention to what I'm doing and concentrating to the slide. You're able to collect inform, information stored as a memory so you can use it later. 
organ function, right? Your heart is pumping, your body is functioning appropriately so, so you can concentrate on this presentation. Movement and balance, most of you are sitting down or um, standing up. So that posture, that's all being maintained by the brain of also emotions. And finally, intelligence, right? So our brain is doing all these computation or this calculation in every minute, every second that we are alive. So that's why it's the most powerful computer ever to be developed, ever to be designed. So the goal with machine learning is to have the computers think like a human. So this is Arthur Samuels. He is considered to be the father of machine learning. And he said, he defined machine learning as the ability to learn from data and, it, and improve themselves without being explicitly programmed. So it's about how you get the data from the environment, from the world, and making sense out of it. So what do we mean by that? What does he mean by not explicitly being programmed? I'm going to show you a simple equation. This is the equation that all of us are hopefully familiar with. This is the equation of the slope. So we plug in a number and we get an output or y value. And this helps us track points across along the line from all the way up here to all the way down here. So these are what we call explicitly programmed computers. So they work within the limitations of the formula. However, machine learning works the opposite. So what it does is it just collects information, images, uh, points, data, language, whatever you want. It and, and goes through a very, very highly high level computation and says, oh, that image is showing me the dog or it says that image is showing me as a cat. So this is what we call machine learning. Machine learning is using data to make sense out of the world. And that's what we do every single day. So how does a machine does these type of computation? So it uses three ways. And I'm gonna give, show you some funny pictures to illustrate what I'm trying to show you. A machine learns first using a supervised learning. So it's like a child teaching a child or a baby how to walk. So you're teaching the computer how to think by saying that's a cat, that's a dog, that's a, a mouse, that's a rabbit. And that way the machine learns to separate all the different animals. Another way the animal learns is through unsupervised learning. So the ability, a baby laughs or cries automatically. That's something within their nature. So unsupervised learning is that you don't have to explicitly tell the, the computer what is what. It just based on the data you give it, it is able to learn from that uh, from that information. And lastly, it's reinforcement learning, and that is when it learns, you tell it yes, that's a great job, and you give it a candy, or you tell it nope, that you're wrong, and give it a timeout. So it's something that kind of form is what we call it's how a computer learns to think for itself. So. What are some of the ways that we have been able to use machine learning in our daily life? And, and when I say that, we, do, we use it every single day. One type of AI or artificial intelligence uh, study is called computer vision. And computer vision is essentially using, uh, our, our brain have this, what we call the visual system, which is able to allow us to see and make sense of the world around us. So when you, somebody sees a cat, uh, the information goes into your brain and the brain says, mm, that's a cat. So essentially what we want to do with computer vision is mimic what our brain already does every single day, every single minute. So in the computer terms, we call it convolutional neural network. And that is you feed it all different type of images. And what um, the computer does is it goes through a very complex learning process and, I, and the output, it segregates or differentiates the images based on some difference it sees. So whether it's an infraction, a hemorrhage, a tumor. So this is used in, in medical science or in medicine to help doctors know whether a patient has some disease or some uh, injury and, and so many other things around the world. Also in our phones, we use it to track faces. Like I was showing you earlier with the filters, this is what we are using to generate the filters. So an example, what a computer vision trying to do is, I'm pretty sure many of you remember this uh, picture, 
Uh, this is from a basketball uh, finals um, between the Cavaliers and the Golden State. Sorry, Haley. Haley is a big fan of the Cavs, and I'm a big fan of LeBron, so I had to put this on uh, just so because I want to root for LeBron James. So what you see here is LeBron James blocking the shot. And we see that and we, we kind of know what's going on, but if a, a dumb computer does not know what is going on. So you, we try to make it intelligent. We try to make it um, smart by teaching it how to identify these features. So A, it learns the shapes of the ball, the shapes of the, the people on the pictures, the texture, meaning that the, what kind of flavor the image has, the colors, we have black, white, gold, different colors in the arena. And lastly, spatial arrangement. How are the people in this image organized or arranged? And what are they doing? So by taking all this information, it makes sense of um, what's going on in, in that picture. And that's how we want a computer to learn. And that's what we're going to do today with our exercise. And so because of this, now it's become very, very popular um, way of um, improving athletes' performance because um, we want to make sure that our athletes are performing at their peak and not being hampered by injury or unnecessary forms because that is the best way for um, athletes to maximize their potential, to maximize their, um, their ability. Furthermore, uh, for example, in basketball, if an athlete is making a higher percentage of shots from one spot or one uh, point, then you tell that you, you teach, uh, you show that information to the basketball. So every time he's making a shot, you can go to that point in order to make that accurate um, shot. So that is the power of computer vision. And like I said earlier, doctors can now are able to use this information to, the, to allow athletes to not to prevent injuries because a lot of injuries not ha don't happen on the game. A lot of injuries happen during practice. So when they see that happening and they have the information or the video recorded uh, of what happened, they can A, train that athletes to, so that they don't make the same type of mistake in the future. So they learn, they learn a better way of performing that um, exercise or that action or B, and doctors can use that to understand how that event or that injury happened so that they can make a better diagnostic approach when you use the technology. So lastly, do you, have, do you guys have any questions before we move on to our, our tutorial? Yeah, so thank you, Cameron. Um, that's what we're going to do uh, on our tutorial, I'll show you an example of how that's done. Any other questions before we, we continue? All right, so today we will be going through two awesome algorithms that are, we use every day um, in science and esports, uh, different technologies, and that's OpenPose and B-Side. So what OpenPose does is it tracks the joints in your body. And what B-Side does is it groups or the different uh, exercises you do uh, accordingly. So for example, this video, again, this is by Andy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask everybody to count the different types of exercise that Andy does. And then we're gonna compare to what a computer, uh, how the computer does. And we'll see which who does better, whether the computer does as good of a job as you guys will do in identifying the, the different exercises. So when I say exercise types, if you see him doing lunges, that's counted as one. If you see him doing jumping jacks, that's, ex, uh, that's also counted as another separate type. Um, Push-ups, so it's a two minute video. I'm gonna play it twice and then um, I want everybody to write on the chat how many exercises they counted. So, and then we'll compare with the, what a computer, what my computer told me it counted. Okay. So are you guys ready? Thumbs up. All right. Mm. 
new in jumping jacks now. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure many of you are not familiar with this because um, Haley was making us do all these exercises earlier. He's doing squats now. Again, and then he is using his, um, he, somebody's recording him, so he's using just a regular phone. Um, he's not using anything fancy. Not only can you also do exercises, but you can also do dances. This is a Mark Karana dance. Um, so in burpees now. All right. Do you guys want me to play it again or are you guys good? If you are good, you can tell me on the chat how many uh, exercises you counted. Got 10, 12, 12, 12. 12, okay. That's a good question, RM. Um, does counting, does doing the push-up in two different directions count as two? So for us, it counts as one because push-up is push-ups but the computer thinks it is. So I want you guys to think it the way a human person would think it. 12, 12. Yes, they, they, it does count. 13, okay. So it's between 12 and 13. So 11 to 13. All right. So thank you all for the participation. 11, okay. So now we'll see what a computer, uh, how a computer counted. Um, so it, my computer is telling me that it counted 10 exercises. Remember, uh, it's counting starts at zero. It's computer, uh, it's a computer, so uh, forget about the zero, but it's telling me that it's counted 10 different exercises. Hmm. Okay, so this does not tell us a lot because you know we don't know what is what. So what we do is we look at the video. So this is a side-by-side -side video of the groups and um, the exercises and how the exercise was tracked. So this is, it's saying that that's one group. So that's group one. It's going between group one and group four, okay. And this is group four. Uh, okay, group four. So I want you to pay close attention to that. What what happened was, sorry about that. Oops. Um, so that's group four. Same group. So the, the burpees, it groups it into two. So when it goes up, it says that's group three. When it goes down, it's group uh, four. Squats also grouped into two. When it goes down, that's group seven. Group When it goes up, it, that's group nine. Um, that's group five. When 
does the kicks, that's group seven and six. Um, so it's separating when he kicks to the, towards the camera and to the side of the camera. Push-ups, that's a group zero. And now it's group eight, it separated the two. Yeah. The lunges are grouped together. And the dances are grouped together, so that's group two. Um, so one thing I want to, the reason I chose this video uh, I'll, as I was show earlier, you can optimize this so that it accurately predicts what is what. But the reason I picked this video in particular is because those small movement that are grouped separately, that's very, very important when it comes to um, exercise science, especially when it comes to athletes. Because when people do, when athletes do, uh, for example, when they do jumping jacks, if the movement they do from one side to another and um, if that's different, that can be the cause of the injury. Very, very important for doctors and athlete, athletic trainers to make sure that athletes perform optimally in their exercises. So what open pose does is it tracks the joints. So it tracks the nose, the, the elbow, the, the hand, the, the joints, a different part of the joint. And it takes the X, Y positions for each point. And what B-side does is it takes those X, Y positions for each point for each part and then categorize them separately, which is what we will do now moving uh, after this. The tutorial is gonna be about that. But before I go to the tutorial, do you guys have any more questions or should we go to the tutorial directly? Yep. On human, it's because of the open pose. I, I'll show it to you. It's it's been trained with many many pictures using the learning, uh, the three different learning that um, I showed you earlier. It uses it uses those approaches, and open pose has been trained with many 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 images of humans doing different poses, so it can accurately um, measure what um, what. Uh, uh, what a person is doing and how the person is acting based on the points that we you see on the on the pictures. Thank you. That's a good question, Cameron. Any more questions? No, uh, it's not. You can. Uh, in terms of the depth aspect, you can with different cameras. It's all about the type of camera you use. But this is very very. Um, uh, this is very, it's not, it, the, the depth aspect is not required for this type of uh, technology, by the way. Okay, there's no more questions. I'll go through the tutorial. So this is how it's gonna look like when you open uh, Canvas and you can access all these videos. It's a very, very detailed and um, both the PDF and the video. And following that video, we'll be able to help you do everything I'm gonna do because we don't have a lot of time and because it takes us quite a time to run. I'm gonna uh, show you a very abbreviated version of the tutorial, but know that the tutorial and the, the, what I'm gonna show you now are gonna be the same and you should be able to run both open pose and B-side following the tutorial. Do you guys have any questions? No? All right, so I'm gonna go first by um, how you, we run open pose. Um, we'll use um, this code to run open pose. So after you install all the software packages you need following the earlier tutorial, the tutorial, the main tutorial on the uh, linked on Canvas, you will copy this code, which is a command that open pose will use to run your data and then copy it on, um, on this PowerShell prompt, whereby it's going to run uh, and analyze frame by frame the points on each um, body feature 
in um, in your video. So once your folder is organized and your um, you have your video ready, you can uh, copy this command and then uh, make make sure you change the names to the video you're going to be analyzing, and then open pose will pop up this um, uh, screen where it will keep track of every point and then save them on a folder. So what you see on the folders are um, frame from every frame, the joints, the, the coordinates of each joint on each frame. And it will do that for the entirety of the video until um, it's done. Once you have that done, you can close open pose because now you're done with running open pose. The second program we will be using after this is going to be uh, B side, but open pose is basically doing this um, for the entire, that's what we use open pose. Open pose is going to extract the key points, meaning um, it's going to extract, um, it's going to extract the X coordinates, the Y coordinates for each body feature. And this is the likelihood, you don't need to worry about that, but this is uh, the points that you need in order to run open pose. That's the, I mean, B-side, that's the only reason we are using that today on this tutorial. So once that's done, you will launch your B-side and uh, follow the, again, the tutorial on the guide, it's going to, uh, if you follow that correctly, it will um, open up uh, an app, a browser app, which is called B-Side version 2.0. And this is what we're going to use to extract the different exercises we saw on the video um, earlier. So this is where your data is going to be saved. Um, make sure all your input data is put accurately, because if one of your input is incorrect, then B-Side is going to um, crash. So, uh, so make sure that you follow every single instruction on the guide and also on the what on the on the app to make sure that B side is running um, correctly. And if you experience any issues or if you if it's not working, feel free to reach out to us through CMU um, NBD, the email address provided on your um, packet, and we are more than happy to help you run it correctly. Uh, for the computer versions, um, to run both OpenPose B-Side, you can use your own computers to run it, as long as you have um, eight gig RAM or above, um, because if it's below that, then uh, it's, it doesn't have enough processing power to run it. So if you have a computer that's bigger than eight gig RAM, then you should be able to run it. And it's gonna take some time, depending how long your video is, Mine, as you saw, was two minutes. So for you guys, I would um, I would um, recommend you do less than a minute, so you'll be able to get the data you need at a reasonable amount of time. So once your, your data is loaded and pre-processed, the next step is extract and embed features. But this is a very important step because that's extracting features means that it's extracting based on the data you give you gave um, B side is going to pull out the different exercises you, it saw on the yeah again sorry uh, I'm uh, yeah and like I said this is a preview this is just uh, to show you how it's going to be done follow the uh, the video is going to be more helpful and this is a very important step and this is where you can make adjustments so earlier in my um, in my um, uh, and when we did um, our experiments, we, you guys uh, counted 11 exercises. So this is where you can um, train B-side to uh, make corrections. So it can extract infinite number of uh, exercises or what, ex what B-side thinks is an exercise. So it's up to you to make sure that you optimize it a little bit. And that's part of that um, re reinforcement learning. It, you need to optimize it so it can think uh, the way it should, it should think. And for me, I thought I counted 10. So I said, let's go with 10. Um, and I wanted to see how that would do. And uh, B-side decided and 
I created a model based on that. And the model showed me that, um, as you'll see, and uh, this is a very important step. Sometimes B side just suddenly will crash. If that happens to you, you can always click refresh on this uh, icon and we'll start again. You will not lose any data or everything you work for. It's already, get, it's, it's gonna be saved automatically. So you don't have to worry that you're gonna start uh, from the scratch every time B side crashes. So it's um, anytime that happens, just make sure that reload your B side app and then it's gonna, uh, it's going to uh, continue working. So if you wanna make sure that your um, B side model that you created is accurate, you can uh, run this uh, validation. And what it's saying, what this is telling us is the it, B side can predict the different exercises with approximately 98 range uh, percent accuracy, which is a very high range. And that's why I decided to take it. But all, if you think that's, uh, if you, find out that that's not uh, correct. You can always go back here to identify and tweak number of clusters and you can make fine adjustment to the number of clusters or the number of exercises you think are, are there so that B side can make optimize itself better. All right, so it's not, all, it's not just a, a, a black box where you run B side and then it spits out a number. You can always make modification to the program so that it can think better, um, it can think better in your when it's learning. So once you create a model, you can go ahead and generate snippets of video. So those videos are essentially uh, for the push-up. It just shows you the push-up video without having to show you the entire um, um, videos. Um, I'm, I'm including this error messages because I don't want you guys to freak out every time you get error messages um, because that's going to happen. And that's the part of coding that I think everybody loves. Um, so when it crashes, just think, of, think ahead and see what's going on. Try to figure out where things are going wrong and then try to fix it. And that's going to be a very, very rewarding experience for you guys because that's going to help you become a better scientist, a better uh, computer scientist or um, engineers in the, in the future. So whenever B-side or open post crashes, think about what's going on and then um, ways to resolve that issue. Because usually, especially with B-side, it's very user-friendly. So uh, it's always just one or small thing that's wrong that's causing you to fail and that's gonna be easy for you to um, fix. Again, uh, if you experience any crashes, feel free to reach out to us because we're more than happy to help you. So once the generate video snippets and interpretation are done, finished running, you will see this small, uh, like uh, one second, two second videos of the different exercises. That's like the push up, uh, it's gonna be grouped together as one group. The jumping jacks will be grouped together as one group the squats gonna be grouped as together as one group. And that's what we are, we are seeing here. You can also create a GIF to give you like a sample, to give you like a sample of what the different exercise look like. So for example, group zero, which is the push-up, is grouped both at group zero, the one that's facing on horizontal uh, direction or, and then one facing um, towards the camera. And then the squats are also grouped separately the jumping. So all these are just the groups that are separately. And that's the power of B-side. And that's why we love using B-side because it makes our life easier. And you don't have to go through slides and windows to make sure that uh, you extract or trim videos. So the rest of this is for analysis purposes. So if you are interested if, to learn more and make a, a very like, advanced level of kinematic or anything related to joint movement analysis, you can move forward and create a, um, a CSV file in using the predict uh, file. And that's going to be able, from there you can extract the distance, the angle, the velocity, the acceleration, the different parameters within the exercise that you saw to make sure, uh, and 
get a grasp of what's going on. And going back to the spirit of our tutorial today, or um, um, physician and athletic trainers and athletes, when they have this type of capacity, they can know, okay, when they're, for example, if somebody's doing, um, uh, if somebody, if, uh, if a bodybuilder is doing curls and, for, and he's doing it very quickly and not exercising the muscle group that they need to exercise, uh, they can look at the snippet of videos and under, and tell and show him where what and where is uh, the things he's doing is get, is go, doing wrong, so he can correct himself uh, or herself, um, depending. Um, uh, yeah, so that is the power of B side, and I'm um, and that's what the tutorial is today for. And like I said earlier, all your data will be saved on the folders. And you don't have to worry about losing any data and you can make even more cool and B side is not only useful with uh, human data, but you can also use um, data such as um, animal data. We if you have the pet if you have a dog and it's moving around and doing like if you want to record them and extract those behavior that we extracted with Andy, you can do that with B side. So it doesn't it's not only done for humans, but you can also do it with animals. Um, with pets, whatever, like any organism you need. Um, it just needs to, as long as you have that X, Y position, uh, I showed you earlier from that we got from OpenPose. Unfortunately, OpenPose does uh, only works with human motion. It does not do uh, well with animal motion. However, there are other algorithms and softwares, free softwares that are, um, that are similar to open pose that can work with um, that can work with animals. Uh, if you're interested in animal work and animal studies and or by biome the biomechanics of uh, animal um, motion. So these are the really cool stuff and it's all free. It's all uh, you don't have to pay for anything and it doesn't require high tech like um, the eSport what we talk like Haley was showing up with eSport. You don't need an entire field, an arena or a basketball court to do this. You can do it within the confinement of your home without having to purchase expensive equipment to run this program. So in the last five minutes or two, three minutes we are left with, I would like to, um, I would like to know if you guys have any questions or things you wanna know more about this algorithm. Were there questions on the chat? I wasn't following the chat, uh, Ashley or? No, you. I think you're good so far. We only had a comment that it was uh, getting complex to follow, but I made I made a oh, note okay, okay. that uh, you you no one was expected to follow along with the tutorial yeah. today in real time. Mm -hmm. um, we opted to ha uh, put up the resources on Canvas because um, part of following along the tutorial would have had to include downloading um, both Bsoid, uh, OpenPost, and Anaconda. And that, that in our test run would take uh, a quite, a, quite some time. Um, and so we wanted to kind of give you this overview that you're able to see what you can do with these tools that are completely open source. Anyone can download them and run them on their computer. Um, can but I, uh, um, yeah. Can I say something? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so um, here is a tutorial. It's, it's screenshotted, everything you need, steps outlined. Um, it, you don't need, I mean, uh, yeah, I know I went very fast when in tutorial, but I would just wanna, I wanna give you just a brief introduction of what it, OpenPose and B-Side are, but there are just ve very detailed, very, um, uh, very to the point steps that you can follow and do the same thing I just showed you in my video um, to run both OpenPose and B-Side. And this, like I said, will take a long time for us if you were to do it step by step. I don't know if you have enough time for that to do it today. Yeah, but if you're, if you're interested and um, have any questions while you're following along this guide after today, feel free to email us um, and we'd be happy to try and help you through anything that you that you get through. 